We are here um, talking about the formation of the Women's Business Connection, which is celebrating its 20th anniversary um, oh. at a very special event. And we're talking to the various, I'm not going to call you founding mothers, but the original leadership organization team. Um, and why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you were doing during the time of the founding and how you became involved. Well, my name is Catherine Hesse, and I'm a partner with Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, and Lahane. We're a law firm. Our main office is in Quincy, and I was a partner with the law firm uh, and uh, had been in involved with the chamber for some time um, because my partner, Arthur Murphy, who is the senior partner in our law firm, uh, had uh, had been active in the chamber. So that's how I originally became um, acquainted with Phyllis and uh, Dolly and some of the others. Were you active in the chamber at the time at all? I was active in terms of I went to the breakfasts and I you know did some informal networking but not terribly active. I'm trying to remember what year I first went on the chamber board. Um, I think I can't. I can't honestly recall right now what year that was. It's been, it's been twenty years or so. so. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Time goes by. So twenty years on, mm. was it worth it? What has been accomplished? Where does it need to go? Oh, was it worth it? I have to say, absolutely yes, unequivocally yes. It was worth it. The place of women in business on the South Shore and beyond. Uh, it's hard probably for young women today to realize what a different world it was back then. And it's, it was hard for me to realize that it had even taken that long. When I first started in the practice of law, I was always the only woman in the room. I mean, there were just, there were never any women. Um, and there was one group I was involved in, and there were three young, um, young women um, who were all from very different uh areas of the profession, but we became fast friends, even though we normally would have been opposing counsel and everything else, because there were so few of us. And in the chamber, there were often very few, you know, it would be a sea of men. And so it was, it was really, I think, so worth it, because Phyllis's goal as she changed it was not just to put a woman or two on the executive committee. It was really to create a permanency where women would always have a major place, the place that they should have on the South Shore, in business, and particularly within the chamber. And it's been so good for the chamber, and it's been so good for women. So yes, it was worth it. What do you think the contribution of the WBC has been to the chamber and to the general business environment? I think that the contribution of women to the chamber has been enormous. and although perhaps a little um, originally um, some people uh, were not quite sure what this you know, offshoot the WBC was all about. I think over time, the entire leadership of the chamber began to realize just what a gem the WBC was. The women who were involved in organizing it, and I say that not just the small group of the steering committee, but well beyond that, were able to harness uh, volunteers who were interested, enthusiastic, had tremendous organizational skills, were able to get more people at their events than at almost any other chamber event, were able to develop mailing lists and develop you know, just techniques to develop things like facilitated networking, which had not happened at the chamber before that really made people enthusiastic. It wasn't long before we had men beating down our door saying, can't we come too? And one of the things I'm very proud about is that the chamber, or very, that the Women's Business Connection very early on said, of course, of course, this is not an exclusionary group. We want this to include everybody. And I think it's been a real lesson. And in fact, today, those facilitated networking groups still stay. Now they're gender neutral. Um, and there were many other things facilitate, you know, just, I think women's tradition at that point of being the uh, people with hospitality skills, as it were, um, people who would think about welcoming new members into the chamber 
and to realize that, you know, you have a, a small business owner come into a chamber, you see a bunch of, you know, bankers and insurance people, and you don't, you don't know if there's anybody who really wants to talk to you or that could help you in business, and having someone to hold your hand those first couple of meetings, introduce you around, um, concepts like that. So the ambassadors group, I think, really got a boost also from uh, the Women's Business Connection. Just so many different ways it's enhanced the chamber, and I think it gave the chamber a real shot in the arm at a time that the chamber needed it. Do you think that because of its existence, the WBC contributed to the growth of the chamber and its membership and broadened it in some way? Oh, no doubt about it. The the WBC, there were, it, it was a time, when the WBC came into play, women were really starting to appear in much greater numbers in many companies. and it was very clear they were going to go somewhere. And so I think that had the chamber not said, Phyllis, go with your idea, um, and had there not been the support generally, there were some great men um, who really supported, I think, Phyllis in that. And I think had it not been for that, you would have seen an exit of very qualified people many of whom became heads of the chamber um, later on. Um, I'm talking about people like Elena Kirkless, the second chairman after Phyllis that was a woman, so, and other people that, that were very well-respected business women on the South Shore, but simply, um, well, you know, you don't hang out with them on the golf course or whatever. They were women, and I, that's changed. The Women's Business Connection even went to social things, having golf clinics so that women could get comfortable in settings where men talk a lot of business that women hadn't thought of. So really, really, really uh, core skills that brought women in, and I think it opened up a lot of men's eyes to the fact that they were losing out on a lot of talent. And it, uh, I th it was just good all around for everyone. That's fascinating. I, and I hadn't thought about the golf or the social skills or the, or the connection skills. From your own personal perspective, was there an event or an incident or um, something that's sort of emblematic of what you think the WBC um, has contributed or did? Well, I think what it has done is it has really created an atmosphere where no woman ever has to feel like there's no place for her in the chamber. Uh, Every, there's a place for every woman in business. And in fact, I think it goes beyond that. I think it really has opened up the chamber to people of all different backgrounds um, and to looking at diversity in so many different ways and realizing that the talent pool and the businesses that are out there. And one of the things that I think that was interesting is that the WBC also brought data to the table to show people, if you look at the number of new businesses created, not just on the South Shore, but generally. And you look at how many of them are created by women and what a big segment of the business population you would be leaving out of your membership as a chamber if you didn't involve those people. I think that was also an eye-opener. And I think one of the things that it also did is that it gave, it gave exposure to talented, bright, capable women at the highest levels of the chamber. And there is, there's nothing, I think, that's more valuable to opening up men's eyes when they weren't used to it than to just getting to know people and to realize they're not different. They think the same. They have the same financial pressures. They have to meet payroll. They have to bring in clients. And they're doing it. And they have some good ideas about it. And maybe I can learn from them. And maybe we can be colleagues. And so I think it really became such a positive, positive thing. I, I have nothing but, but admiration for, um, for what the WBC has done and continues to do because it's still necessary. You know, I, I was always one of these people who thought, well, maybe 20 years on, it won't be necessary anymore to have a women's business connection. I'm sorry to say, I mean, I'm glad that there's still a reason, you know, a raison d'etre for it, but, but um, I, was, I think I was perhaps a little bit too optimistic, and then I thought perhaps, you know, in 20, 30 years, uh, there would be such equality and such a lack of need for any specialized groups uh, that it would cease to have a reason to exist, and I'm kind of sorry to report that I don't think we're there yet. 
What do you think the WBC should be looking toward in this um, evolutionary development of sort of an equal playing field? Well, I think the WBC has been a groundbreaker in so many ways that I, one of the goals that I, if I were still active in the governance, I would be looking at how could the WBC, with its experience, how could it bring to bear its the talents of its group to broad, more broadly diversify the membership of the chamber? You know, could we get in more women of color, more Latinas, more um, more people from other diverse backgrounds, and and make them feel welcome in the chamber too. If you look at the demographics of the state, there are rapidly growing populations, including businesses that are not as well represented in the chamber as they could. And I think with the Women's Business Connection tried and true model of really bringing people in, and one of the th reasons why the WBC was so successful is they realized that the WBC, to attract and keep women involved in the chamber, needed to make sure that it was bringing value to those women in their business because women, as everyone else, are very, very busy. And as much as they might support politically the WBC, they weren't going to spend a lot of time on it unless it was also going to be of value. And I think that's what the WBC was able to do, was it was able to connect so many people, let people know, and really develop that business-to-business -business referral um, as, a, as a very important thing, which had always been there, but had not been as explicit, I guess. And so the idea of really trying to help other people in business and making that a stated reason for it, I think that was really helpful as well. Well, that sounds like it fits in perfectly with the latest initiative of the Chamber, which is to identify and catalyze economic development on the South Shore. They've done the market survey. Now I believe they're going to go town by town mm -hmm. or constituency by constituency. And uh, perhaps the WBC can be an active recruiter in terms of getting those constituencies to have a voice at the South Shore Chamber table. I think it absolutely can. And I look at, for example, the Asian population in Quincy. What a great thing. There has not been um, as much participation from the Asian community in the chamber as I would like to see. And if you look at our, one of our new city councilors here in Quincy, um, that would be a, uh, a great idea, I would think, to reach out to people who are business people in the community um, that might be able to make those connections. And I would think that someone like Nina, for example, would be a great way to start. Nina Lee and the new <coughs> Quincy City. Absolutely. Yes. Young, bright. It's tremendous, yeah. Marvelous. Any closing comments um, that you would like to leave with either your fellow WBC members or the, or the chamber group at large? Well, I guess my biggest thing would be a thank you to Phyllis. Phyllis had the vision and had built up the credibility to be able to get this off, to gr off the ground. And she also had the wherewithal to get tremendous women to work with her to get it started. And so that, I think that just making sure that the WBC is continuing to have a steering committee of very diverse women, women from very different industries. We had accountants and lawyers, we had people from banks and insurance companies, we had manufacturing, we had a lot of different things. And that's important so that you have a diverse group of people from different businesses. Today I would look at high tech. You know, you look at the innovation district, I think it's going to be really important to get women involved from the WBC in, in so many of our different emerging industries. And I think, uh, I think there's nowhere to go but up. Uh, but I do think that it takes continued growth. I think one of the things that I worry about is that there has been improvement for women in the workplace. There's been big improvement, but it backslides very quickly. And whenever the economy isn't particularly good, um, you know, it, it, it backslides quicker than it should. And so I do think that it's going to be many, many years before the Women's Business Connection is going to be out of business. It's going to continue to play a very valuable role as we move forward. Catherine, thank you so much uh, for your comments, your contributions in the past to the WBC. 
and your insights into where the organization may need to go in the future. Well, thank you, Chazzy, for doing this and for all you've done um, for so many women and in your role at the Ledger and otherwise. Thank you.